Welcome back, everybody, to the Finch Tribe Prospects Podcast. I'm your host, James O'Connell. Uh, this is your postseason, postgame edition here. Yankees take a one nothing lead in the LDS against Tampa Bay Rays. Um, just want to remind you guys, be sure to follow us on Twitter at the Pinch Tribe, at Pinch Tribe Pros. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram at Pinch Tribe Pros. Same thing. And uh, subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Give us a rating. Uh, tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Just We just want to hear from you. Um, un- unavailable to join us this week is Ricky Keeler. But uh, oh, pleased to be joined by Alexis Farnacci. Alexis, how are you doing today? Doing well. We've got a great win from the Yankees tonight to kick off the ALDS, and we'll get into that. Um, but a really great night for the offense tonight to get uh, things kick-started for us. Yeah, uh, let, let, so let's start with that. Let's start with the overall thoughts of the game. Um, basically, I'll, I'll, I'll get into it here. Basically, uh, it, it was a kind of a back-and-forth thing the whole way. Um, I thought Garrett Cole, although while he didn't have his best stuff, he still grinded through it. It was very obvious he didn't have his best stuff. Um, missing missing locations terribly. And G-Man Choi, I, I, we'll get into that. But, man, uh just a lot to talk about, Alexis. Just your overall thoughts. What did you see tonight? What did you like? What did you not like? Yeah, I liked how, you know, we talked about the fact that Garrett Cole, no, he did not have his best stuff tonight, but he still managed to stay in there for a solid six innings, striking out eight, um, just really able. And I think we saw him kind of settle in late, um, gave up that home run early to G-Man Choi uh, and gave up a couple other big hits early on. Um, but really, I think in that fifth and sixth inning, really just started to settle in and uh, become the Garrett Cole that we've all seen toward the end of this regular season. Um, so I liked how he was able to kind of really hone in and lock it in there late uh, to come away ultimately with that win. Um, and just a great night for the offense. Uh, Frazier, Judge, Higashioka with a huge night. LeMahieu with a great night. And then that Stanton bomb uh, in the ninth to really seal the deal. Uh, the offense is mom- has momentum right now, and they need to keep that throughout this series. And Garrett Cole's final line, six innings pitch, three earned runs, eight strikeouts. Only one walk. It's. I don't know if it's just that Tampa has his number to some degree. I think it just has something to do with Tampa has seen him so much during the regular season that they're so used to it. Um, I kind of remember like going into that 2018 postseason where where uh, the Yankees had seen Chris Sale. Oh, I'm sorry, the 2017 regular season the Yankees had seen Chris Sale like three weeks in a row. I remember saying, well, I mean, you, you see enough of the guy, they're eventually going to hit him. And sure enough, they did hit him. John Farrell threw him, I believe, like three series in a row at that to that point. Or like I don't, I don't know, I forget. But if you see enough of a pitcher, you're going to eventually get used to his stuff. And I think that's kind of what we saw with Tampa tonight. They were putting really great at-bats together. Um, and specific, what was that? Aronzo, what was his name? That he was – Aroza, a Rosarina. I don't even know how to pronounce his Rosarina? name. Rosarina. Rosarina. What is yeah. that guy's deal? What's his – He's, what, he's what, just what got – he's got the Yankees number this year. He really does. He stayed red hot, and in my opinion – we gave G Man Choi that free walk late. Why not walk a Rosarena? You know he's going to do damage to you. Um, why give him the opportunity to do that? It it was like I can't between Josh Naylor and Randy Rosarena. I I'm really starting to lose my mind with these no name guys. But it's uh, I don't know. But overall, Garrett Cole grinded through it. So let's kind of get into the offense here. Just just overall. Going to throw it out there. This team has scored 31 runs in three games against arguably the two best pitching teams in the American League. The Cleveland Indians, who was headlined by Shane Bieber, then Carlos Carrasco, and now the Tampa Bay Rays, headlined by Blake Snell. Four runs, I believe five. What's that? What's the final line there? Five and a third for Blake Snell. Um, over, the, the bats, this team's on fire. This team's absolutely on fire. If you had any concerns about – well, I'm sorry, not for nothing, there was reasonable concern – uh, in pre- previous season, postseasons that this team really does not perform well against top-tier pitching, but th- this just doesn't seem to be the case this year. You went against Shane Bieber, you went against Carrasco, and now Snell, and you 31 runs in three games. That's that's over 10 runs a game. That is absolutely absurd. Um, but, Alexis, who, overall, who stood out to you tonight specifically in that offense? Who, who do you want to give kind of the star of the game? Oh, man. I mean, so many guys. It, Aaron Hicks, uh, three for four tonight. Two RBIs. He had that sack fly early. Um, and then that RBI single to score Higashioka late. Uh, really good night for him. Um, just overall, you look at Gio Urshela. He was two for five. Uh, almost a hit for almost every guy. DJ LeMahieu, two for five tonight. Uh, Aaron Judge, one for five with that home run in the RBI. Hicks, we talked about three for four. Two RBIs. Luke Voigt, one for four. 
Uh, Giancarlo Stanton one for four with that massive grand slam to really close it out. Uh, Torres one for four. Frazier one for two uh, with that ma- monster home run for him. Uh, Guardy was one for two tonight. And then Higashioka two for four. Really great performance for him with an RBI as well. Um, to total 15 hits tonight uh, overall for the Yankees. They really did have Snell's number. And Snell just going five innings pitch, pitch six hits. Four runs, two walks, four strikeouts, and three home runs given off of him. Um, just overall team effort by the Yankees tonight. You know, there was a small ball, and then there were those monster home runs that we had um, out of the guys tonight to really seal the deal. And I really want to point out Aaron Hicks at three for four. Two yeah, RBI. Just, just really a, a phenomenal job there. Um, they, everyone kind of has their doubts about this guy's being the three hitter. And I, I know, I know the people I talked to were saying Aaron Hicks is by no stretch of the imagination a three hitter. Um, he, he's, he performed, he's, he's performed the last, I believe two games. He had that big triple in game two. He, he's, what more can you really ask from there? And Kyle Higashioka, I mean, man, two for four, that home run. Uh, and the questions will just, the, the, the calls for Higashioka to become the full-time catcher over Gary Sanchez will probably grow larger, especially after the way Gary Sanchez will more than likely look against, um, uh, what's his name? Tyler Glass now tomorrow night. Glass now tomorrow. Yeah, it's. And, and again, Glaber Torres, one for four. Urshela, two for five. It's unbelievable how good this guy's been. Um, and let's get into Stanton. Stan, John Carlos Stanton, uh, the guy's taken how much criticism for, for how pretty much since the second he's got at the pinstripes. And forget that walk-off home run against the Seattle Mariners in the 2018 regular season again in July. This was that Yankee moment for him. This was his first big Yankee moment. Uh, don't give me that signature moment. Uh, I'll walk off home in July. Uh, that that made that was nauseating to me when they were making those calls. This was that moment for him. This is where he, I guess, you want to say he earned his pinstripes in a sense. What was it a five three ball game? And, and you really waited for that one big final kick in the kick in the you know what? And, and we got and he got it. He got it. Yeah. He delivered. John Carlos Stan delivered in a postseason game, and that's gonna. Hurt a lot of years. That's going to turn a lot of heads. But but really, uh, you got to. He's put together good at bat after good at bat this entire postseason. You can't say anything about John Carlos Stanton right now, and for for at least a good while, though, just some real clutch home runs. That's just he has three home runs in three postseason games. Had also John Carlos Stanton, phenomenal performance. Um, and you have, to, you have to give props to Stanton as well. You know, you talk about it getting those two. Um, what we would arguably say were not the greatest calls in the world uh, to strike out um, looking twice. You know he was on fire. You know he was ready to do something. And for him to come away with that home run, really stay locked in in the game, shows how much of a veteran he is and his capability to do that. And he loves this ballpark. Nine home runs here at Petco Park. Um, it just shows it's called San Diego for a reason. I just want to point out two things here. Just two two managerial decisions by Aaron Boone that you can question. Number one, did you? How did you feel when Brett Gardner subbed in for the game to the for Clint Frazier? I I didn't like the decision. I didn't understand why we did it at all. Um, Frazier coming out and hitting a home run for you. We know all year this guy has just been locked in. I. And Gardy's been doing nothing. I don't know why you make that decision. It almost seems like Aaron Boone thinks this is a platoon situation. More like that Clint Frazier is a platoon player. This is an everyday bat. I'm not sure why we're not trusting him against right-handed pitchers. Uh, Brett Gardner um, looked just as clueless as I'm sure Clint Frazier would have looked against uh, who, who was in at that point that was throwing very quirky. Let me bring him up on Tampa. Um, Thompson. He would, I, Brett Gardner would, I'm sorry, Clint Frazier would look just at least a little bit better than Brett Gardner did against, against Thompson there. But, um, I don't love where they're trending with this whole Clint Frazier, Brett Gardner platoon situation. I get Gardner's a veteran. I get he has experience. He has a good glove, but, uh, I, I don't, Clint Frazier just put one in, uh, onto Pluto. How do you take him out of, the, of that game? And another, and let, let me move on to the other thing I want to discuss. This is, I think, now the second time where Aaron Boone has taken out Luke Voigt too early. Yeah. Is it really that drastic of a difference? Like, I'm going to – let me let me ask you this. Is it that drastic of a difference defensively to put Tyler Wade at second and Deidre Mayu at first? 
is it like really Luke Voigt has been has done just a fine job at first base. I don't know. Do you think it's that drastic of a difference defensively? I I don't. I don't think you take Voigt out there. Um, he's got a hotter bat than Tyler Wade has ever had. I get you wanting to have that defensive situation behind Britain and them calling it the Britain infield or whatever they're calling it now. Um, but no, I I don't know why you take Voigt out there. Um, another questionable decision. Agreed with you on that. It's it's the second time he's done it. He did that in game two. Uh, granted, Tyler Wade did walk did work a walk that at bat. He had a great at bat, but there, it, that could have been an even bigger situation. I, I don't I don't know why why he does that so often so early. Like you knew Luke Voigt was gonna be was gonna get up again in the ninth inning. Like yeah. and that that spot was gonna come up, and he's I mean he was the home run leader. There's I really I think it's a case of over management. I don't think it's that drastic of a difference defensively. Just to leave Lemayu in at second and and Luke Voigt at first, not to lose Voigt's bat for no reason like that. It just doesn't make sense. God forbid he comes up with a big spot, big spot. Um, it's I don't know, it's bizarre. But before we get into anything else, Alexis, I'm gonna throw it to you for the ad read. Yeah, so don't forget we've got our dugout membership uh, available to you on pitchtryprospects.com. Uh, you can de- uh, get that membership by going on to the website using the hashtag Welcome Back Baseball. Again, use that hashtag Welcome Back Baseball. Sign up for our dugout membership. Gives you great exclusive content to our player interviews, coaches, insights that Ricky does, and other really great content that we have on our website and social media. So, again, Pinstripe Prospects dugout membership using the hashtag Welcome Back Baseball. So I kind of want to get into the bullpen here for a little bit. Chad Green, Zach Britton, both combined, two sh- shutout innings, um, both with a walk each. Uh, it, it's the prospect of this of this series being five. Was it five straight days? Is it that they're some, uh, which is crazy? Yeah, five in a row, no off days at all. Which is bizarre to me. Um, very good job by the bullpen. I, I thought by Britton only throwing fourteen pitches. Chad Green only throwing 20. Those guys will both be available tomorrow night. Um, Just overall, you got to be happy with what they did there tonight. Yeah, absolutely. You definitely have to be um, happy with what they did tonight. Uh, To be able to not have to use Chapman tonight was huge. Um, For Cole to go six uh, and then the bullpen to take over for those last three innings, uh, absolutely clutch. A great inning by Green, followed by Britton, followed by Sessa to close it out. really phenomenal job to really save guys uh, for when we might need them in games two through five, if we end up getting to five. That And that's an underrated feature there that you don't have to go to a roll with Chapman, especially with the five, with the five games in five straight days. It, it's, that is so big. Granted, Kevin Cash didn't have to go to Dio Castillo or any of his other guys, but uh, they lost. That, that's the point. And before I can, we kind of preview tomorrow's, not, not preview tomorrow's game, I guess talk about it a little bit. Um, Gleyber Torres stealing up six runs in the, in the ninth inning that, and, and let's not forget that Tampa was going head hunting immediately after John Carlson hit that home run on purpose. Don't know. Couldn't tell you, but I thought that was a nice little fun retaliation by Gleyber Torres stealing up six runs on a guy's first pitch of his major league career. I thought that was a very nice FU to the race. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, uh, the the side of me kind of feels bad for McClanahan getting put in in that situation. And a huge congratulations to Shane McClanahan of the Rays, making his MLB debut, the first major league pitcher in MLB history to make his debut in a postseason game. Um, I had the opportunity to cover McClanahan in the Florida State League. uh, And just a great, phenomenal guy uh, with a a wonderful story. Um, So just a huge shout out to him. Congratulations. A tough spot to come in. Um, but a great day for the McClanahan family tonight. Well, welcome to the Bigs, McClanahan. That's that's your first welcome, getting stolen up six runs in the postseason game. And you know what? This team, these teams are going to see each other going back to the going back to the uh, hotel. Uh, should be quite interesting. And I just want to point something out. I hate Willie Adamas. I don't know. I just feel the need to say that this guy is dancing outside the dugout every second. He you, you struck out three times, pal. But let's maybe pipe down a little bit. Um, but very happy the Yankees shot that team up tonight. Uh, I know they lost eight out of ten times to Tampa in the, in the regular season, but this was not – it's not the same team by any stretch of the imagination. The whole team was hurt. Stanton wasn't in there. He had a grand slam tonight. 
LeMayu wasn't in here in there for a majority, a, a good portion of those games. Um, Judge wasn't in there for a majority of those games. He had a home run tonight. Uh, this was this is kind of almost that statement game where it's not well. I mean, I know it was close kind of the whole way up until the very end, but this was that statement game that hey, that wasn't this isn't the same team you saw in July and August. This is a very different group. This is that this is the team. This is the, the well for the most part, with the exception of James Paxton. This is the group that everyone picked to win the World Series. That everyone picked to be the World Series favorites. Uh, they're heating up. They're, they're, they're as hot as anything, and you got to be just petrified to play them, no matter who you are. Yeah, and can we talk about two for a second? Whose idea was it to put the Rays and the Yankees in the same hotel um, during the ALDS? You know they're seeing each other. Uh, yeah, they're probably trying to social distance and everything that Major League Baseball is forcing them to do right now. But if you're me, that's not a great decision to put two teams that are very heated against each other and have made that very clear to put them in the same hotel. Uh, questionable decision on MLB's part there. Questionable to say the least, but um, I guess it is what it is. These teams obviously do not like each other. It's been said it's, it's, throughout the regular season. Uh, they they have a strong hatred for each other. And uh, those guys got to feel real good, me and the Yankees, to come out of this one with okay. a win. 1-0 series, it just it's kind of shoved it right in their faces. It's got to feel good. But uh, let's head into tomorrow night's game. Davey Garcia versus Tyler Glass now. What are we looking for, Alexis? How are we feeling about it? Uh, I think it's a big spot for Davey. I think he's going to need to come in, make sure he can stay calm and composed. Um, We've seen him have really good outings. We've seen him have not so great outings. So I think this is going to be crucial for him to really come in and show what he can do Um, in a really big spot. I think it's something to be said for the fact that it's not Masahiro in this number two spot. It's not Jay Happ in this number two spot. It's Davey Garcia. Um, The Coaching staff clearly sees something out of him, and he needs to show them uh, why he deserves that number two spot tomorrow. I think Davey Garcia starting tomorrow night game, starting the game tomorrow night or tonight, whenever you listen to this, uh, just makes it all that more important than the one game one. I looked at kind of this game here as kind of I looked at the game as game one of the ALCS last year, where it was Tanaka Granky, where it was just a must win. This game was a must win. You have a rookie making his making his postseason debut on the mound tomorrow, and, and granted, Garcia showed flashes of brilliance, and then he showed flashes of not of you know, like not so much. Um, I'm not saying tomorrow's a throwaway game, but it's not as much of a muscle win as it is tonight. It, it, the Yankees flat out have to win every single Gary Cole start. Uh, they they cannot afford to lose a Gary Cole start. That's just something they can't do if they want to win continue to win series. So tomorrow's game. I'm not going to label it as a muscle win. Obviously, every game in the postseason is very important. But you're going up against Tyler Glass now. I know he had a 4-0 ERA this year, but that guy is as tough to hit as anyone in the league. Uh, it's, I'll argue that the toughest pitcher that they they're supposed that they were supposed to face uh, throughout the whole postseason was Shane Bieber. But Tyler Glass now is going to give give a very very good run to the Yankees bats, no matter how hot they are. This is a dude that throws 100 in his sleep with a curveball that falls off the table. It's going to be a tough matchup. And Garcia, if he goes toe-to-toe with him, all power to him. But I, I don't know if I see that happening tomorrow. I, I think Tampa's going to be favored in the game tomorrow, just out of common sense that it's Tyler Glass now. But I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see what, what we expect from Davey. And, again, I, I'm not sure. What do you think we're going to see tomorrow? Is it is it Davey's game? Or as soon as he gets into trouble, are we going to see Jordan Montgomery? Or are we going to see a Luis Sess or Lo- Loisa? What do you, what do you think? Is this, how how short is his leash? I think I think with a one zero lead, it's going to be pretty short. Um, I don't think you can risk the Rays getting a big jump on you. I think it's also going to depend on how many of the runs the Yankees can get. It's going to depend on how well this offense can do tomorrow. I think this is a big turnaround for the offense to be able to and need to come in and say, okay, we put up nine runs tonight. Let's put up another eight or nine tomorrow. Um, they need to stay hot. They need to keep this momentum going. They need to help out their pitching. Um, I, I think if they can get ahead early, I think Davey settles in well. I think if he gets into trouble, yeah, we see Montgomery or Loisaga, um pretty early. Yeah, I don't think the leech is all that long. Like I said, I, I, I think it's pretty much common sense there. Uh, I, I see this more as a situation as Davey's going to get you as many outs as he can. This is by no by no stretch of the imagination his game to lose or his game to win. 
for tonight's game was Garrett Cole's game to win or lose. That, that's there, there's a difference there. Uh, tomorrow, if the, this first sight of big trouble, Aaron Boone's calling up Jordan Montgomery, maybe going back to Luis Sessa, but uh, who else? I'm not sure who else it would go for long relief. If it, worst case scenario, Jonathan Holder, if the game's in really bad shape, and and you know what we have to see tomorrow at some point. Michael just, King. What's that? Is it or we throw or they throw Michael King in there? Right, Mike King's on the roster too. So that's an, that's yep. another. One. So you you do have options outside of Davy Garcia tomorrow to get outs, and that that's really all all about there. Um, but we're gonna have to see Adam Adovino at some point. It, it's I don't know what they're what what the deal is with him. Uh, he he's been very bad since since pretty much the end of last season. But with playing five games in five straight days, it's all hands on deck. It, it's it everyone is is available. Adam Adovino has to be used, especially tomorrow night when you have a rookie in the mound and you're not anticipating much length. I, I don't think no matter how well Davy Garcia is throwing, he's not going more than three times, or more than two times with the order. I don't see that happening unless he's got a no-hitter going or something. I, I just – you're not going to let him – let Tampa see him three times. They didn't even let they, – they, last season they didn't let uh, – I forget, Minnesota see Tanaka three times, I believe. So they're not they're, – it's just not going to happen – uh, I, I don't know what they're going to do, but uh, it, it will, I guess we'll see. I, I guess – I think the first call is probably going to be Jordan Montgomery uh, or Mike King. I'm not sure, but it, it's for sure not going to be Garcia. It's not Garcia's game to lose. Not necessarily. I think, like we said, if he's doing well, if the offense is rolling, um, we might be able to see something from him that's a little bit lengthy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think too, Boone has an interesting spot to say, okay, if this does go to five games, I can't burn out my bullpen either. Um, so it's an interesting decision that these managers have, but yeah, same token. I I don't think you let Davey go very long if he starts struggling. Before we wrap up here, uh, again, be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at Pinstripe Prospects, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, same thing, at Pinstripe Pros. Subscribe to the podcast. Uh, Alexis, how can they follow you on Twitter? You can follow me on Twitter, at Alexis Farinacci. Um, we will continue to have all the coverage of this ALD, ALDS series for you on our Facebook, Twitter, um, and then a recap on our Instagram as well. And you can follow me, at O'Connell. And while I expect to hear us again tomorrow night after the post game, I, I believe Ricky should be back. Uh, but, yep. So the Yankees take a one nothing series lead in the LDS. For Alexis Farinacci, I'm James O'Connell signing off. Have a good night, everyone. Have a great night, Yankees fans.